I'm emceeing, so we're going to get started here quickly. Uh, but a couple quick things before we get going. There are microphones on both ends. Uh, please uh, wait uh, till you get the microphone when you're called on and say your name and affiliation. Also, photographers, we will do a photo op um, up front after, so um, you can get your shots now. But we also have that um, in front of the dais um, once the press conference is over. All right, I'm going to open up um, to our sporting director, Matt Crocker. Thank you very much. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, look, it's, uh, it's great to be here with you guys today on this uh, exciting day for U.S. soccer. Um, when I took the role of sporting director, uh, I knew the first priority was going to be the search for uh, the U.S. men's head coach role. Um, and after a thorough process, I'm thrilled to announce uh, that Greg uh, will be rejoining us as our men's national team head coach. Um, the process has been really comprehensive um, and evidence-based. Uh, and before this process, I didn't know Greg. Uh, but what I did find is during the process, from the first moment that I met him through till the end of the process, what came through in abundance was his passion, his knowledge, his leadership, and his growth mindset. And I'm really, really excited to partner with Greg. Also, what came through in abundance was his passion to develop the legacy of U.S. soccer, not just about winning in the men's national team, but about developing the game for the good of the game, the growth of the game in this country for both players, uh, coaches, and clubs. Not, it's not business as usual. It's what we call a, a, a evolution. So what we're looking to do with Greg is to work closely to kick the program forward, to work out what those competitive advantages are going to be to take us forward through to 2026. So uh, with that in mind, Myself and Greg will start that process immediately. Um, you know, obviously, there's, there's two key tournaments that we're in now that uh, uh, the team are prepared for, and BJ will be working uh, with the team to continue to hopefully achieve success on the pitch. But we've really got to get together to, to discuss some of those big key priorities and some of those, those key competitive advantages that we're going to be going after to continue to evolve the team and to continue to get better and work on the framework of this strategy for 2026. Um, the final thing I'd like to say is I'd like to thank all of the uh, candidates that took part uh, in the process and out of respect for their um, confidentiality, uh, what we won't be doing today is talking about um, them specifically as individuals or uh, the, the various hiring processes that we've gone through. Um, and just to finish off, I'm just really excited to be in a position to partner with Greg. It is a partnership. Um, and throughout the whole process, his skill sets have really shone through, and I'm excited for the future uh, of U.S. soccer. And I'm going to hand over to, to Cindy. Great. Thanks, Matt. And thank you all for, for joining us today on such short notice. You know, this is a really important moment for soccer in our country. Um, we have a great runway over the next few years. Um, it's a great moment for soccer. Um, and I'm really looking forward um, to working with Matt and Greg and the rest of our sporting staff to make sure that we are capturing and, and doing everything we can to make sure we take advantage of the momentum leading up to 26 and past. Um, Matt, thank you for the thorough process. Um, I would call it exhaustive, but it was more exhausting. <laughs> Um, it was exhaustive and exhausting. Um, but seriously, thank you so much for the process that we went through. Um, you know, the way that you ran this and the selection that led us to Greg Berhalter, I think speaks volumes about you as a person and as a sporting director. Um, and I just wanted to congratulate you on this hire. Thank you. Um, and so with that, Greg, I have all the confidence in you to lead us, um, not only on the field, but continue your leadership off the field and helping U.S. soccer grow the game. And this, I think this is a great hire, not just for U.S. soccer, but for soccer in this country. And I look forward to working with you. And so with that, I am proud to reintroduce our next men's national team head coach, Greg Barhalter. Thank you. Um, thank you, Cindy. Thank you, JT. Thank you, Matt. Um, mentioning the the interview process, it certainly was a, a grueling process, but 
it gave me some insight into Matt and, and the process that he works with, and that was certainly intriguing. Um, you know, we're here to try to take this program to the next level, and um, to be aligned with good people and to be doing it with good people is the important thing. When thinking about this challenge, um, you know, a, a couple things come to mind. Um, when I was in the locker room, immediately after losing to the Netherlands in, in Qatar, walking around and, and looking at the players' faces and, and seeing their heads down, and there was real disappointment. It wasn't satisfaction for, for us going to the second round and, and losing to a world powerhouse. It was real disappointment. And I looked at their faces, and, and that was intriguing to me because they were hungry, and that was the important thing. Second thing that really made this opportunity worthwhile is thinking about the, the staff, the players, the culture that was built over these last four years. How do we now take it to the next level? What does that look like? The togetherness of the group, the cohesiveness of the group, how does that evolve and get even stronger? And then lastly, you know, when I took over in 2018, it, I was coaching kids. And to see the development of this group, the individuals and the team, has been amazing. To see the progress that they've made individually in their careers and collectively as a team made me think about, okay, what could the next three years look like? If we continue to develop in the way that we have, what is it going to look like? And that was exciting because you think about if this group continues to go where we think they can go, the sky's the limit. So I'm happy to be back, thrilled to be back, can't wait to get back together with the staff and the players, and um, thank you. All right, thank you, Greg. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Cindy. We're going to open up for questions. Wait for microphones, please. We're going to go to Steve Goff in the front. Steve, mic behind you. Greg, welcome back. Um, Thank you. How do you go about repairing um, what seems to be a, a difficult situation with GEO? Um, a lot has happened, and that seems like it's a, this is going to be a major, um, a major issue going forward. How do you see it, and, and can, can things be resolved? Well, I'd certainly acknowledge that there's work to do. Um, and Gio is an important player to this team. He's an extremely talented individual. And uh, I have the obligation and the commitment to coach him like I coach every other player. And I want, I want to get the best out of him. We want to get the best out of him. And we know that if, if we can unlock his talents, um, he's going to be a game changer for this program. So there's work to do, and part of it is working together with Matt and, and trying to build, rebuild the relationship that we know will be important moving forward. Great. Just a reminder, please say your name and affiliation. Kevin? Uh, Kevin Baxter, LA Times. Greg, welcome back. It's not like you've ever left. Thanks, Cindy, Kevin. a question for you. We're six months into the new World Cup cycle. We're kind of back to where we started. It feels from the outside like we lost six, the U.S. team lost six months in this process. How, how do you feel about that? What, what was accomplished, if anything, in those six months? Well, I think from our perspective, it was really important to follow the process. And we said from the beginning that we were going to hire uh, our sporting director first. And we went through uh, a great process um, that led us to Matt Crocker. Um, and we said from the beginning that we were going to um, put this into the sporting director's hands and have them lead the search because we think that continuity and that connection between the head coach um, and the sporting director was really important. Um, and I am really proud of the process. I think um, we, we are where we are, and I think this is a great place for us to be. Um, and I'm looking forward to the future. Um, I think Matt probably has a lot more to add to this as well. Yeah. Um, how, how do I um, – can you just repeat the question again for me, please? Sorry, I, it feels like the team is back to where we started, or it started six months ago. And I'm wondering, does it feel like the team lost six months, or was this, an, uh, as Cindy said, sort of a necessary process where you actually learn things and move forward? Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I guess I can't comment before I joined, um, but what I can say is, you know, since I joined, there's a there's a real desire internally to make sure that we have a really robust strategy working towards 2026. Um, and like I mentioned, you know, the process that we went through for the head coach was really robust. So 
you know, everything from a real, you know, a data-driven model uh, that identified coaches with the, uh, the, the, the skill set and the competencies to take us forward. Um, we then whittled that down into the type of leader that we wanted, you know, somebody that could uh, create and drive a vision-led identity, somebody that was outstanding at building relationships, you know, a number of, or eight, eight competencies in total that we ran a number of candidates through. And, you know, from my perspective, you know, being able to conduct a worldwide search to land with Greg, um, and it's not, like I mentioned, it's not business as usual. This is an evolution of the program. And, you know, we are already working together to identify what those things that we're going to continue to develop within the program to make it even better. So, you know, uh, it might look like as if uh, there's been a lost period of time, but sometimes you need time to reflect and to move forward. And, you know, I think it's really been a time for reflection and a, and a time of an opportunity to connect with Greg uh, and work in partnership with him to take the program forward. And I think this also speaks highly of Greg and how he has developed his staff. And I think we didn't miss a beat with Anthony and now BJ uh, taking the helm. I think that speaks to how Greg was as a coach before and um, prepared those coaches to step in when needed. I think the match last night showed we haven't missed a beat. <laughs> <laughs> Henry. Henry Bajnell from Yahoo Sports. Um, Greg, welcome back. Um, Question for you, can you take us, in, in as much detail as possible, can you take us through what this intensive interview process entailed? Um, you know, I don't know how much we're willing to share, but it was extensive. I mean, basically a, a series of interviews um, over a couple of days, and then uh, in the day itself was close to 10 hours of, of different testing and, and conversations and tasks p being prepared. So overall... Again, I, I left the the, um, the day basically impressed, impressed with Matt, impressed with his process, impressed how he he looked at things, and um, thought to myself, this could be a good partner to move forward with because of the thoroughness of, of how he's going about this. Yeah. Matt, just follow up on that. How many candidates did you go through that, you know, 10-hour day with? Yeah, sure. So, you know, uh, like I mentioned, we started the process with a real data-driven approach. So we're looking at coach behaviors, so the type of coaches that uh, there's a number of data sets and skills where coaches, you can identify whether coaches are front-footed coaches, aggressive coaches, whether coaches can reflect our style of play and continue to evolve that. So that was the, the beginning point. Um, the second thing was very much around things like ELO rating, uh, coaches that are winning coaches, coaches that have got a repu reputation of developing young players. Um, and that turned us, and that churned out what I would call um, double-figure coaches, so, uh, you know, in double digits. Um, so, again, we then took uh, those candidates or a number of those candidates through a compre the comprehensive process. And, you know, clearly along the way, there's conversations that we have with coaches around, you know, for example, us being really clear and decisive over what is the role, what the competencies that we're looking for. And that, you know, either weeded in or weeded out some, some coaches. Um, and then obviously we took us through the final assessment process where it was, like, uh, like Greg mentioned, you know, rigorous, intense, everything from psychometrics to, you know, abstract reasoning tests, you know, logical thinking to, you know, tests where candidates had the opportunity to prepare for, uh, for certain elements around strategy and what they would do, how they would evolve the team. And then, you know, certain tests where they were just literally uh, had to deliver under pressure at that moment in time. So... You know, it gave us an opportunity to get, you know, real rich data. And then it took us a period of time uh, to sit down and effectively churn all of these numbers. But what I'm delighted to say is, you know, on every step of the way, Greg scored, uh, you know, phenomenally. And we're really excited to have him here. Great. Sorry. Thank you. Michele, Gianone, 2DN and Univision. Two questions, if I may. One for Matt and one for Greg. Matt, we had players like Pulisic where on the record last week supporting Greg. How much input did the players have in your search? Mm -hmm. And for Greg, welcome back, Greg. Uh, have you met with the team? And how did it feel to listen to team and Christian talk and support you publicly? Thank you. Yeah, I mean, just in terms of, of player input, I mean, you know, I'll give you a sense of how I work. You know, we have an amazing culture that uh, Greg, the team, and the staff have built here and some r a real clear identity with the team. And from day one, my job was to make sure that I engaged with the players so they understood where we were, 
and what type of process I was intending to take uh, the candidates through to work to work through um, you know who the best candidate was ultimately coming out to, coming out the other end, and um, you know I kept them up to speed throughout the process. I was also keen to tap into to their skills to say you know because I don't have context, I hadn't been in the camp with them yet, so you know asking them questions around what are the key skills that you want in a head coach. Um, and that enabled me to develop a really comprehensive um, coaching framework or a competency framework. So the players were actually a part of this process all the way through. And I think that's really, really important because there's some strong owners and leaders within this group. Yeah, and from my standpoint, um, I haven't met with the team. I'm not going to meet with them right now, although I'd love to, to go in the meal room and give everyone a hug and, and reunite with them. Um, it's, it's been a while. But their focus right now is winning the Nations League. And, and that's what's most important. Um, regarding the comments, you know, I, I think it's always nice to hear when players are supporting you, no question about it. But I think what's even deeper is when you hear things like, um, you know, we can deal with this challenge because we can face adversity. We know how to stick to what we've been doing and keep going. Like, though we're a family. Those cultural things are, are what really excites me and really gets me motivated to be back with the team. wonder if you could take us through the last week or so, uh, just in terms of the process. You know, at what point did you feel like you had a really good chance to, to return? And, you know, at what point did the, the Federation make an offer to you? And, you know, when did you accept? And when was everything finalized? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. What, do you want to you help out with this one? <laughs> yeah, if there are any bags under our eyes. that, that uh, we, We've been, you know, this has been a, um, I think, uh, we chatted about this in D.C. You know, when we chatted, we, we um, you know, we were still full process. And so, uh, the you know, this is something that, as Matt was able to uh, get some capacity in his schedule earlier than anticipated, we were able to, to, to ramp up activities here. And as I shared, you know, this has been a very, you know, we've been charging hard at this, and we obviously want to make sure we get it right. And so... Uh, you know, this is something that, uh, you know, we're, we're only a couple days uh, from making our decision where, where Matt and, and team recommended uh, to me. And, and, you know, some of you heard this uh, yesterday. We uh, uh, had the formal ap approval from our, our board, and, and here we are. And we're obviously super excited about marching forward together and, and everything that we're going to go do together to, to, to go win in 2026 and beyond. Yeah, we'll keep going. We'll yeah, I mean, you never, as you know, you never take things for granted, and all you want to do is put your best foot forward in the interview process, and then let the the cards fall where they may. And I was never overconfident. Uh, you know, it was just about going through the process and and um, you know, delivering the best I could. Run the left. Hey, Greg, nice to see you again. Meg Swanick here hey, from Meg. a few outlets, actually, The Guardian, my Substack, a few others. Um, you made a visit to the UK earlier this spring. I think you were able to see and meet with a good number of the key guys on the team, Christian, Matt, uh, Tim, Anthony. I think you went up to Leeds. You saw Weston, Brendan, Tyler. I'm curious to know if, if given the fact that you were still a candidate for this position, in any way did you have a conversation with them to try and get their blessing for your return or gauge their opinion on, on your return? And did you at any point make a visit or think about making a visit to Germany to, to see Gio Reyna? Yeah, you know, the, the purpose of, of that visit um, to the UK was a learning trip. It was to meet um, a number of coaches, a number of executives in, in, in the um, in English football leagues and in, increase my knowledge base. And when I met with the players, the, you know, funny enough, nothing related to the team came up in, in almost all the cases. You know, it was really about just supporting them. Um, you know, I understand what it's like to be away from your home country. And in some cases, it was just sharing a meal together. Um, some guys were just having a coffee together. Some who was watching their game and just supporting them from that standpoint. But really nothing um, regarding my status or, or things like that was the subject of our conversations. We'll go to Doug. Hi. Uh, Doug McIntyre, Fox Sports. Uh, Hi, Greg. Hi, Matt. Question for both of you. I'll start with you, Matt. Um, uh, I'm sorry, I lost, lost my train of thought there. Um, w when you when you look at um, when you look at 
when Greg, you know, I'm sorry. It happens sorry, to all I, of us. It happens to me. Start over. So I apologize. <laughs> I'll start with you, Greg. Right? When, it was when a great game you, last night. When did you find out exactly? Um, and and what was that? What was that like? It was, you know, the day after the um, interview process. Um, I stayed w at my location, and um, I got a call from Matt, and he was asking if he could m meet with me briefly. And him and Cindy were there, and we talked, and I got some feedback about the the interview. And we said goodbye. And um, on my way on my way to the airport, I, mean, I was actually in the airport. I remember. And um, Matt called me and he said, you're the guy. And, um, you know, it was, it was a great feeling. Um, you know, if you could imagine what the si last six months have been like. Um, you know, I started thinking of my family. I started thinking of my girls and, um, and my son and, and, and everyone, my whole family, my extended family, everyone. And um, it was a great moment. And I started thinking about the team and the possibilities. And, you know, your mind's going 100 miles an hour. But... I was really motivated to, to come back and, um, and really make a go uh, of this next World Cup and making the nation proud. Matt, quickly, I remember what I was going to ask you. How did Greg satisfy you that he, there wouldn't be any issues with Giorena going forward, that that, that wasn't going to be a problem? Yeah, I mean, I think, um, the, as I mentioned, the, uh, the coast commerce framework, um, you know, it, it, it addresses things, you know, so for example, builds relationships is a massive part of that, you know, an outstanding communicator, somebody that's as good as listening as well as talking, um, somebody that can influence and impact behavior and relationships. So, you know, throughout this whole process, um, we, well, the, the whole process stresses in those areas and, you know, it came out, you know, clear that, you know, Greg was an individual, um, you know, that had a, a huge amount of, of leadership skills and competencies. Um, like us all, you know, we've all got areas of development and we've, we've, we've also talked about those um, in the process and how we're going to pull together a really robust development plan to support, you know, Greg like we would do with any of our employees to become the best leader or the best member of staff that they can possibly be to support the team. So, you know, I've just got full confidence that, um, uh, that the whole process unearthed Greg as, you know, not just an outstanding coach but also an outstanding leader to take us forward. Go to the second seat. In front, really, yep, right there. Hey, Greg, Joe Lowry from the Total Soccer Show and Backfield.com. I'm curious about what the last few months have been like for you as you've had some time to be away from the team and, and to reflect about some of the soccer stuff, right? Um, are there any decisions that you look back on from the last cycle and think about as reference points that can help you make optimal decisions for this next cycle? And Maybe, is there a piece of your game model that's evolved at all as you've been away from the team and away from the, the rigors of coaching during your time away? Thank Sound you. like the interview question. I'm just going to say that. Can <laughs> I, I'm just writing down that question. That was a brilliant question. <laughs> no, I mean, it is, it's a gr great question. Um, lo looking at the performance um, of the World Cup uh, as the measuring stick and, uh, as to how you can be successful in the next World Cup, there are certainly elements um, you know, to dissect. Um, I, I didn't think we were good enough on set pieces. Um, attacking set pieces in the last World Cup. That's definitely an area of opportunity. I think offensive transition moments um, let us down at times in the last World Cup. Uh, our defensive shape was excellent. Our high pressure was excellent. But then when we win the ball, um, how can we more effectively create chances on the counterattack? Um, so digging into all these things, you know, looking at different um, defensive formations, um, you know, how to press opponents was something I, I focused on. And then speaking to other coaches um, about the management side of it, leadership side of it, you know, I was able to travel around Europe and meet a number of coaches um, and, and walk through some of that. So the time off was actually helpful in some respects to, to, um, to share ideas with, with a lot of high-level coaches. You with us, Simon? Question for Matt. Uh, obviously, you have some perimeters when you start off with that, with that process. In terms of limitations on what you, what you'd be looking at were you were you restricted to candidates who were out of contract or did you talk to people who you might have to pay compensation to and also it related to that obviously the choice has been for another Am american coach was was there a preference that culturally that's a good fit for the team to have a, an american or were you really open to to any any candidates from anywhere I hate these double questions, but I'll try and remember everything. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, you know, when I took the role as, as sporting director, the, um, uh, 
the key thing for me uh, was that the organization were ambitious. So, you know, there has been zero restrictions on who I've spoken to, um, you know, whether they're in contract, out of contract, what leagues they've come from. It's been a worldwide search. So, you know, I made sure from the beginning that this, I wanted to bring the best candidates to the table. Um, so, you know, just to hopefully clarify that, there were zero restrictions. Um, the second thing around, you know, U US, again, I mentioned it was a worldwide search. So not at one point during the process did I think we needed or we could only focus on a, a smaller pool of, of US talent, for example. However, through the process and coming to the back end of the process, when Greg spoke about legacy um, and he spoke about his, and you could clearly hear and see his passion for the team, for the nation, you know, I actually think it's given us a competitive advantage as well, but it wasn't uh, part, of the, um, part of the criteria for, uh, for the process. Paul? Um, Paul Kennedy from Soccer America, and I have a, unfortunately, not a double question for you. Um, <laughs> so right down first the one is, you uh, have mentioned the data and metrics you've, been, you've worked with in the whole process. Can you give it a specific example of it where, where Greg really stood out from, from the pack? And the second question is, next year will be the Copa America here. It'll, it'll be clearly the biggest test the team will face um, before the World Cup. Um, what were, are your expectations for that, for the success of the team in that tournament? And what would be a scenario where you uh, think about maybe having to make a change that can't take place um, with coaches or anywhere along the line? Yeah, I mean, I mean, firstly, to point out that, you know, it's a partnership and we spoke about, you know, 2026 being the priority. So, you know, our vision is set clear that, you know, we're on course for, for Greg to lead the team, you know, 2026 and beyond. And that's, uh, and that's clearly the ambition. Um, just regarding the data model, I mean, <laughs> Greg pretty much set the data model. So, you know, he was responsible for four years of development around style of play, around pressing metrics. You know, clearly what he's done is he's developed a, a really, really young, dynamic, front-footed team. So, for example, one of the metrics is around uh, coaches that over their tenure or their period of time at a club or a, or a national association have reduced the age of the team, for example. Um, I've already mentioned about ELO ratings. So, you know, a, a head coach who has come in and over their tenure improved the performance and the outcome of the positioning of the team. So, you know, a lot of the metrics that we said both on the pitch and off the pitch were actually set around the work of the team over the last four years. But obviously, as I mentioned, it was also about the stretch and the evolution of, of that process because it's not, you know, we don't want to be sat here in, in three or four years' time, you know, that we've just churned out exactly the same process. But what I, what I have found out from taking the role and immersing myself in the program and seeing the team is there's been a tremendous amount of great work on the pitch and off the pitch, but we've just got to get better and we've got to identify what those competitive advantage things are, and Greg's already highlighted a few. And we've got a real opportunity, you know, both on the technical front, on the high performance front, you know, to bring in, you know, world-class, um, you know, world-class staff and world-class performers to make us better. And you know, we have to push those boundaries for sure. We'll go to Paul, and then we'll come back to the front. Paul Tenorio from The Athletic, um, two for Greg this time. Um, the first is uh, you talked about, obviously, there's some work to do with Gio. Do you have a plan of how soon you'd like to meet with him to, to be able to start that process and, and not have it have linger? And uh, you were also connected to a couple jobs in the last few weeks, including quite prominently Cuba Medica earlier this week. Um, how close were you to maybe taking another job, and, and had you started thinking about potentially life moving on from the national team at a certain point? Yeah, so with, with Gio, I think the most important thing for him right now is to, to focus on uh, playing in a final and, and winning the final. Um, I could imagine after that he'd want some vacation, and you know that's not uh, meeting with me is not the priority. It's for him to get rest and prepare for the upcoming season. Um, we'll have time to do that. It is a priority, but we'll have time to do that before um, the September window. Uh, regarding... Regarding Club America, you know, one thing I'd say is um, I, I, I've never dealt with them before, and um, I was really impressed with the level that they were working at, um, the, the staff, the management, everything. And, and I think it was an a intriguing possibility. But one thing I told them, um, you know, when I got the date for this interview is I, I have to do this interview. I, you know, I know that we, we have something that we're discussing, but I, I have to go through with this. 
because I, I, would, ne I would regret it the rest of my life if I never gave myself the opportunity. And um, so, you know, thankfully, they were accommodating. And, um, you know, I got the job, obviously, and now I'm here, but it was um, just a lot of good fortune. Um, multi-part question. Sorry, Matt. Um, Sanjay, by the way, from Back Kill Scuff Podcast. And thanks for coming. Um, firstly, with regards to the Olympics, uh, for Matt and Greg, do you guys have an idea of who you want to coach the Olympic team? Is there a chance it could be you, Greg, doing both Copa America and the Olympics next summer? And then for everyone, bouncing off of Paul's question, um, it's obviously tough to set expectations for a tournament in the future. You don't know the draw, who's injured. There's a few different variables. But is there a goal in mind with regards to Copa America and the World Cup? Um, specifically like a stage of the tournament that you want to reach. Thank you. Cool. So, um, you know, again, uh, you know, we spent the last week really talking about, um, you know, you know the, the appointment of Greg and, you know, through the process. I think, as I mentioned, now we need to sit down and, and work out that high-level strategic stuff around, um, you know, first, first of all, looking at 2026, but then working back to see, you know, what we need to do uh, what are the key tournaments coming up? Um, how do we attack those tournaments? So, you know, to be able to give you any specifics around the Olympics right now is, is tricky, but it is a big picture item, and it's something that will be on the agenda that we will speak about, um, you know, straight away. All right, so just a reminder, as we told all you guys, no double questions. Just keep it to one. We'll get around to double. Where's Ibis? Uh, <laughs> Sebastian. Sebastian Salazar, ESPN. Uh, not a double question, but one question for Matt and one question for JT. Sorry, Leon. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't, it's it's followed. It's, uh, you mentioned double-digit candidates and ruling them out. Could you explain the why there and whether you actually talked to any of those candidates before ruling them out a little bit better? And the, the question for you, JT, is just very simple. What was the budget? Yeah, so the first, the first part, like I mentioned, I spoke to you know, numerous candidates you know, from, uh, you know, uh, guys that were at, at, were either currently or, or in other roles in the top leagues, um, you know, coaches who have coached internationally previously. Um, so, you know, those conversations were had with numerous individuals. And I guess, you know, once we got to the situation of outlining the project, which is, you know, it's a 365 job, it's the evolution of the team, it's not just about coaching the men's uh, senior team and helping us win. There's a legacy piece here around, you know, leaving a better footprint for our younger developing pathway teams to make sure that there's a golden thread that runs through everything that we do through to the, the senior program um, and that we needed a coach to be engaged um, in that as well. And, you know, through that process, once you start having those conversations, you then pretty much realize whether, you know, on both sides, whether, you know, the jobs for the candidates that we're speaking uh, to uh, is, is for them, whether they, they, it's the type of job that they fancy. But also from us, you know, it gives you a sense of whether they are, you know, truly engaging in the process. Um, and, you know, like I mentioned uh, when I first got the job, you know, we, we wanted a coach that uh, wants to take this program forward and is engaged and motivated to do that. So, you know, you can very quickly get a sense of um, those types of things through the conversations that we had. Uh, with regard to, to your question, uh, at the start of this process, we had a clear alignment from our board to go find the best coach. Uh, and then we'd figure out how we pay for it. Uh, and so as, as Matt's attested, there have been no restrictions on that front. And sort of related or the subtext of that question is, uh, and, and to some of the other questions around or sort of our ambition, what are, what are we trying to go accomplish? You know, we're here because we want to go win things and we want to make sure that soccer is, is the preeminent sport in our country. That is why we're here. That's why we, we signed up to do this. And so, you know, what do we want to go do? We want to go win. We want to go build things. We want, you know, soccer to be the most played sport in the, the country. We want it to be the, the most followed sport in the country. And so that's why we're doing what we're doing. You know, obviously these things don't happen overnight, uh, but that, that's why we're here and, that, and that's what we want to go do. And we're certainly excited to, to, to all partner and, and to partner with the rest of the team and, frankly, partner with all of you and the rest of the soccer ecosystem to go do that. We'll go front for one question. <laughs> Hi, this is Amor Villa from Diario As from Spain. And I want to ask you... Um, you are winning to Mexico in the field, but also outside the field with the processes of the young players. Uh, what do you offer to the Mexican-American uh, players that could play for both teams um, so they can choose the U.S. men national team? Uh, what can you say about Alexandro Sendejas and also Brandon uh, Vasquez? 
Yeah, you know, it's, it's always going to be a personal choice, and I've said this over and over again. Um, you guys probably got tired of me saying it, but, you know, all we want to do is show them the environment that we've created, and we want them to feel comfortable, and it's, it's always going to be a personal choice. And, and we want to put our best foot forward when, when we're being viewed by them, and um, we want to be very clear what we're doing on the field and very clear what we're doing on, off the field. And if we can do that, um, you know, we're confident that a lot of people will end up choosing for us. But if they don't choose for us, it's something we, we have to live with. And, um, you know, it's a, it's, again, it's a personal choice. And um, we want all our players to feel comfortable um, with their decision. Bringing the team to the next level. Yeah. In what level do you think you are? Do you think you are the new giants of CONCACAF? Or what is the next step in order to be there? I, I don't, you know, it's not even worth getting into that. What I'd say is we're a team that's developed. We are a team that's improved. And we're a team that wants to keep going. And, and for us, it's how do we continue to win in our region? And how do we beat world soccer powers and knock out games? And we're going to be tested with that. There's Copa America coming up and obviously the World Cup, and we're going to have to learn how to, how to beat big opponents and knock out games. That's the next step for this group. Mike, you have your hand up? Yeah. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> Mike Whitehall from Soccer America. Greg, you mentioned that when you first started coaching the team, they were kids. Um, as you get toward the World Cup, they're going to be older. They're going to be much more experienced, not just with the national team, but with clubs around the world with different coaches. Does that mean that you're going to have to change your approach in coaching them? And if so, how? I don't think so. I mean, I think we have such a clear identity with, with what we want to do. Um, again, as Matt said, it's just about improving. But it's exciting to think about, you know, these players are entering probably their prime right now. And in, their, in the, the stage of their careers where they've gathered the experience and now they're, they're almost like veteran players but in their athletic prime. So, it, it, again, I mean, it's really exciting what this group can do. When you think about players like Christian Pulisic and Tyler Adams and Weston McKinney and Tim Weah, I mean, these are guys that are entering their prime. And, um, you know, they've already had the World Cup as an experience, so now they know what to expect, but they're also hungry for more, which is exciting. We'll go to our left. Hey, Greg. Meg Slonick again. Just for clarity, I know you're taking things one – one thing at a time and meeting with players, but I'm wondering if you can confirm that you have not yet spoken with, first of all, Gio Reyna since the World Cup, but also a few prominent guys who were left off the roster, including Zach Steffen and Ricardo Pepe. Um, I have not spoken with them. Um, and, you know, like the Gio case, I think there's a number of, of individuals that you, you want to speak with. And ideally, what you have is, um, you know, alignment with everybody. And all we're doing is, is trying to be great together. And it needs, um, you know, the relationships to be good. It needs players to be, um, you know, focused on, on what we're doing. And, um, you know, there'll certainly be time for that in, in these upcoming months. We'll go to Jeff. Jeff Carlisle again with ESPN. Um, Greg, I, I know you and Matt have, are, are going to be meeting over the next weeks to – kind of fleshed out how do you proceed um, but I'm curious why are you not coaching in the gold cup because uh, <laughs> it seems like the USSF has a head coach finally but <laughs> not going to be coaching in that event yeah I mean I think it's probably a good one for me to take um, you know we, we've, we've chatted quite a lot about this and you know what we didn't want to create was the environment of um, you know Greg puts his boots straight back on, slides back into the environment, and it's very much business as usual. You know, as I mentioned, there's some, you know, real big ticket items around, you know, some real strategic stuff over the next couple of seasons that we need to map out first. Um, you know, the team is in good hands. Um, you know, clearly Greg, the staff have done a terrific job, and the players over the last couple of years have about you know, it's not about one individual. Um, you know, they've had to deal with quite a, 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 amount, a significant amount of change uh, in, the last, uh, in the last few months. But what they've been able to do is to, again, maintain that style and that identity because it runs through, uh, through everybody. Um, you know, so from, from that point of view, um, you know, it gives myself and Greg the real great opportunity of spending some real time together, uh, working through and piecing together the framework of that strategy for 2026 that we can then bring back to the staff and players to start to get their inputs to really develop it together collectively.
I think that was the most important part. All right, we got time for two more. We're going to do Henry, and then we'll end with Paul. Yeah, question for, I guess, either JT, Matt, or Cindy. Um, obviously, a whole one aspect of this, the crazy sequence of events over the past seven months was this 1992 incident involving Greg and his, and his now wife. Was there any concern related to reappointing him head coach related to that? I'll take that. Um, obviously, we take accusations of domestic violence very seriously. Um, and as all of you in this room know, um, there was an independent investigation into the matter, and we trust those findings, um, and Greg has our full support. Great. We'll uh, end with Paul. Thank you, and again, my question is for Cindy. Um, Stephen Goff of the Washington Post reported that the uh, board of directors uh, discussed the, um, and finalized the decision that that vote was not unanimous. What were the arguments against retaining or having Greg come back as coach? I'll, I'll take that. So, um, you know, one of the, as many of you know, we have a, a, a very diverse and, and passionate board. And as a part of good governance, you should have good discussion. And, and uh, that uh, is a, a great part of, of uh, an organization like ours. Uh, and in this instance, we had a very vibrant discussion. Uh, we obviously uh, voted to, to uh, approve uh, Greg as, as uh, our head coach. And, just you know, for context, uh, it's also a group that when we make a decision, even after a, a vibrant discussion, we all lock arms and move forward. And the, the one individual who did not vote uh, in the affirmative, you know, we've already had conversations today around ideas he has around how we make sure the most vibrant and diverse staff going forward. And so uh, I think we, we uh, uh, are in a you know, very united front, and we're excited to go win together uh, across all sorts of, uh, uh, you know, a number of areas. Great. Thanks, everyone, for joining. We will do uh, some photo ops up front here uh, now that we're finished, and we'll see you guys all on Sunday for the final. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Thank you, guys. Thank you.